This abstract depiction of a Mayan city by Gunter Gasso from 1958 was acquired by the Mexican National Institute of Art for 4 million pesos in 2010, one of the most expensive acquisitions of the year. It hangs at the Museum of Arte Moderno in Mexico City. Hi, welcome. I'm Teresa Navarrete and in this video we will apply various value dimensions to collections. What do museums do? In economics, production of goods and services relates to the transformation of a resource, the input, into something more valuable, the output. Museums might use primary resources, such as raw materials and labor, to create an exhibit, but might also include goods obtained from previous processes of production, such as any museum object. Let's take the example of an exhibition about rebosos. The museum is able to transform the textile, photographs, plants, insects, color thread and research, as well as wood boards and paint, into an extraordinary panel explaining how a color is made. Such transformations create value. Exchange value might be measured by the ticket entrance to view the physical exhibition. Another example is an online exhibit, which provides access to an image that you can download from home at any time, together with additional metadata and contextual information. The resulting product is of greater value because it synthesizes all activities by the museum and it can be used by anybody, anytime, anywhere. How do museums inform decision-making regarding resource allocation, for example, to digitize, to prioritize digitization of the collection? Popularity has often guided investment towards collection, preservation, research, exhibition, digitization and overall communication. The top pieces in the collection are generally linked to cultural value, which have multiple dimensions. For example, this museum object. Do you know it? It is a Mexican rebozo, which is a traditional shawl worn by women in Mexico. According to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, rebozos have held a significant place in the Mexican women's wardrobe since the 16th century. In the colonial period, rebozos were used regardless of class and ethnic lines. Rebozos were not utilitarian, but were presented to young women to mark special occasions, such as their entrance into a convent. This particular one was made by Sebastiana Rocha in 1994 and is currently part of the Museo Nacional de Culturas Populares in Mexico City. The economic value of the rebozo can be determined by the cost of the materials used to make it, as well as the labor involved in its production, which will define its market price. This price might increase or decrease if there are changes in the cost of production, in the number of people able to pay for it and wanting such a rebozo, in the number of rebozo makers joining the market, or in the availability of a substitute, like a sweater. In this case, the rebozo is part of the museum's collection and is not for sale. Being in the museum, however, might influence the price of other rebozos made by the same artist. We can identify multiple dimensions in the cultural value, which might shift based on context, just like the economic price. Unlike the economic value, some dimensions are not easily measurable. Experts might argue that such rebozo has value because of its beauty, harmony and form. You might like the color red, or perhaps the way it flows in the air or because of its originality or the quality of traditions observed. Experts might note the high quality of its materials and the technique used in making it. We might appreciate having access if we want to, now or in the future. In case the object is not on exhibit, we might still want to see it, for instance online, with high resolution and contextual information about it. The rebozo might serve to teach about the style, the technique of the rebozos, about the cultural groups associated with its use, or about the history of the production in a particular geographic zone. We might see its role representing a particular period and artistic movement. We might reflect social norms being passed on, for example, as museums are now increasingly seeking to highlight women artists. We might like it because it represents identity 
and geographic place. The San Diego Museum of Art found them valuable and made the art and romance of the Rebozo exhibition, where the Arabic origin of Rebozos was presented along examples of the use of the garment to celebrate births, weddings and funerals by first ladies, the painter Frida Kahlo, the actress Maria Felix and the Empress Carlota. We might find other dimensions to cultural values such as, his, such as his spirituality, its historical role, or the symbolic value attributed to the object. The more you know about the object, the more you can find ways in which it is valued beyond a simple market price. This was the video on the application of value. You now know some of the many dimensions an object can have and might become attentive of who assigns such value. A list of references relevant to this topic is available at the end of the video.